Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Honkai Star Rail version 1.5 has just released, and that means we've got a brand new 5 star character. In today's video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about Huo Huo. Huo Huo is our adorable residential scaredy fox with droopy ears and a very haunted tail. She is the newest featured 5 star character who is of the wind element and who walks the path of abundance. In this video I'll be going over her entire kit, her stats, relic options, light cones, energy recharge and recommended builds, eidolons, teammates and more. Let's start off by taking a look at her basic attack, Banner Stormcaller. Huo Huo timidly whacks the enemy, which certainly doesn't live up to its Stormcaller name. It deals some very minor wind damage, which scales off her HP. Like most basic attacks, it generates a skill point, generates 20 energy, and deals 30 toughness damage. Up next is her skill, Talisman Protection. Her skill is a unique blast heal, which heals the primary target for quite a hefty amount, and it also heals the adjacent targets by about 80% of the primary target. It generates the standard 30 energy, and it also cleanses the primary target only. And finally, and also very importantly, it provides her with a couple turns of Divine Provision. Divine Provision, you ask? Why, that's the perfect segue to talk about her talent. Possession, Ethereal Metaflow. While Divine Provision is active, whenever any character on your team's turn begins, they will be healed by an amount scaling with Huo Huo's max HP. Using a character's ultimate will also trigger this talent. And as an added bonus, teammates with less than 50% HP will also be healed when this is triggered. Also, Huo Huo starts the battle with one stack of Divine Provision, which is why upon entering battle, this whole team was healed by her talent since they were all under 50% HP. But wait, that's not all. This healing will also cleanse one debuff, and the healing can be triggered infinitely as long as Huo Huo's Divine Provision is active. However, the debuff cleanse can only be triggered 6 times until you refresh her divine provision via her skill. Notably, her talent's heal also occurs even if your character is at full health, which is important because with her major trace, Huo Huo gains 1 energy each time this heal is triggered. As we can see, this is a very stacked and powerful passive healing ability that heals for hundreds of health every time any teammate moves. This ultimately leads us to her ultimate. Tail Spiritual Domination Huo Huo's worst fears are realized as she becomes possessed by her haunted tail. She provides a stellar 40% attack buff and 20% energy to her teammates. Neither the attack buff or the 20% energy are applied to Huo Huo. Also, the energy buff is 20% of the teammate's maximum energy. This means that it also does not scale with that teammate's energy recharge rate. It will always restore a flat 20% of her ally's max energy. Unfortunately, the ultimate does cost a hefty 140 energy. As we can see though, this is basically a harmony ultimate in disguise, providing massive utility to her teammates. And lastly, we have her technique. Her technique is quite amusing, but admittedly it feels a bit lacking. In the overworld, enemies become terrified of Huo Huo's terrifying presence. However, in battle, it simply reduces the enemy's attack by 25% for two turns. For trace priority, I highly recommend leveling her talent and her ultimate first, followed by her skill. As for her basic attacks, well, you can just ignore it. And for a basic rotation to get you started, generally speaking, you'll want to alternate between using her skill and basic attack. The reason for this is so that you can reliably cast her ultimate every 4 turns. This also, I guess coincidentally, provides her with 100% uptime on her talent. I'll be calling this skill basic, skill basic 4 turn rotation the SBSB rotation. 
However, of course you can always go for a 5 turn ultimate with much less heals by doing 4 basics and a skill at any point during her rotation. This is a great option if you need skill points for your main DPS and don't mind delaying her ultimate by potentially 1 turn. A couple quick tricks is that you can use a character's ultimate to provide some immediate healing for that character and as an emergency heal for allies under 50% HP. This is a great way to emergency heal some low HP teammates. You can also use Branya's skill to advance forward a character, which will lead to that character getting healed by Huo Huo's talent. Let's next talk about stats for Huo Huo. There are definitely going to be two schools of thought here. The school of speed and the school of thick HP stat. I personally think both are good options, but I personally prefer speed. The healing increase is rather modest with HP% percent boots, and having speed boots means more ultimates for the team, which means more damage overall. As such, for main stats, I recommend a healing percent body, speed boots or HP boots if you prefer, an HP% percent sphere, and an energy recharge rope. For substats, it's the usual HP%, percent, speed as necessary, effect resistance, and some flat HP doesn't hurt either. As for her relics, for 4 piece sets, I recommend the Passerby of Wandering Cloud. Because Huo Huo does enjoy using her skill on her first turn, this will help you maintain the proper amount of skill points needed for the first rotation. A close second place option is the Messenger Traversing Hacker Space. This provides Huo Huo with speed and buffs the team speed when you use her ultimate. The 4 piece Eagle of Twilight line is an option as well. But since Huo Huo only ultimates once every 4 turns typically, it's not quite as impactful as it can be for some other characters. As for other 4 piece relic options, personally I don't recommend any of them but here is a chart with some other options. For her 2 piece relic options, she has 4 main options. Both the Fleet of the Ageless and the Broken Keel are great choices for her, especially with some additional energy regen from her Light Cone. The Peniconi Land of Dreams or Sprightly Von Wack will allow her to reliably 4 turn ultimate with the SBSB rotation, assuming you have enough talent activations. Next up are Huo Huo's Light Cones. When it comes to Light Cones, Abundance characters are honestly sitting pretty. Her signature Light Cone, Knight of Fright, is practically a mini Abundance character in disguise. It heals the lowest HP character on your team by 10% of the Equipper's HP when any character uses an ultimate. It also provides a small attack boost to the character healed whenever the wearer of this Light Cone heals that character. An easy 5 slime rating. What's also cool about this light cone is it is quite universal, and other Harmony characters can definitely make great use of it. The next light cone is the 4 star light cone, The Shared Feeling. This thing is actually great on Huo Huo since she's incentivized to use her skill every other turn to provide 4 turn ultimates. Using this light cone also allows Huo Huo to equip a damage boosting 2 piece relic set like the Fleet of the Ageless or the Broken Keel. Because of all the energy it provides your entire team, I'm giving it a stellar 4.5 slime rating, especially as Superimposition 5. Afterwards, I want to talk about the multiplication. As usual, this thing is incredible. It will allow Huo Huo to provide more ultimates without compromising much on healing. However, you do need to use the Von Wax to reliably 4 turn ultimate. Pair this thing with the Messenger or Eagle and with a speed build and Huo Huo will be moving super fast to provide plenty of ultimates for your team. Alternatively, this is also good for a basic attack spamming Huo Huo to provide skill points for your team. Now post-op is an interesting option as well as it allows you to drop the Von Wax for a damage boosting set like the Fleet or the Broken Keel. However, do keep in mind that this does not boost Huo Huo's healing as she does not heal through her ultimate. As for other Abundance Light Cones, honestly they all have their own comparative advantages and disadvantages and I actually think they are all viable options. Here is the full chart for your reference and with my personal rating for all of them. Alright, you've heard me talk a lot about energy throughout this video, so let's talk about it in more detail right here. I'm not going to break down every nuanced detail about this, but basically, any amount of energy from her light cone enables her to use 4 turn ultimates without the Von Wax or external factors like getting hit. However, if you don't use an energy providing light cone, then the Von Wack or Penicoy is highly recommended. One thing to note is that the more energy regen you have, the less talent activations you need to obtain her ultimate. As such, here are the builds that I recommend. For all her builds, you should run an energy rope, as this enables 4 turn ultimates, and it also enables a 2 turn ultimate in the first round of Forgotten Hall. 
And for all the light cones, which reliably provide energy to Huo Huo, you can get away with using the Fleet of the Ageless or Broken Keel to further increase your team's damage. And for any other light cone that don't reliably provide energy to Huo Huo, I recommend the Penakoi or Von Wax. And up next are her Eidolons, for those of you who won the lottery. I'm going to try to keep this to 20 seconds or less. E1 gives one extra turn on Divine Provision and 12% speed to the whole team while it's active. E2 revives, E4 heals more, and E6 provides a huge 50% damage bonus to any target she heals. Next, let's talk about her teammates. Huo Huo is literally good with every single character and every team except for maybe other abundance characters. Being a universal healer who heals plenty to keep your team alive, she can be used in literally any team. As for some specific examples, well, she's great with Kafka as an example because her attack buff buffs the entire team. She's great with Topaz and Clara as well since she provides attack and energy to both of them. She's great with Dan Hung and Baibur Lune, although you might need to use more of her basic attacks since Dan Hung Il is so skill point hungry. She's overall, in my opinion, the best option for Blade as well, since the other healers don't actually provide Blade with much additional utility, and she can buff him with the Penakoi. Admittingly, her attack buff doesn't really buff Blade by much, but again, she can use the Penakoi. She also pairs amazingly well with Tingyuan, as they'll both provide energy for days for your team. Anyway, I really don't need to go through every example in the game, because it would literally be the entire game minus other Abundance characters, but as you can see, you can literally literally use her on every single team and find plenty of value from her. So yeah, Huo Huo is a super flexible and amazing harmony, I mean abundance character that will meet your healing needs and provide big buffs to your team. Her only drawback is that she cannot heal without using some skill points, but it's a small price to pay for how universal she is and how she's actually a harmony character in disguise. To be completely honest, she feels like more power creep, but this time for an abundance character. So far sustained characters have had a major weakness of not being able to provide substantial offensive buffs, especially at Eidolon Zero. But Huo Huo not only heals plenty, she also provides near harmony level buffs. Do comment down below if there's anything I've missed that you think is important for others to see. And also go check the comments for additional information or corrections to this video. Let me know what you think about our favorite scaredy fox Huo Huo in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.